in the bustling streets of Singapore, where the aroma of sizzling satay mingles with the hum of traffic, there exists a haunting mystery that has gripped the nation for decades. The enigma of the missing McDonald's boys continues to evoke curiosity, compassion, and a relentless pursuit of answers. In the sweltering heat of a Singaporean afternoon, two primary six students from Owen Primary School stepped into the nondescript embrace of a McDonald's outlet. Their laughter, buoyant and carefree, echoed against the golden arches. Little did they know that this mundane meeting place would become the epicenter of their inexplicable vanishing act. The date was 1986, a time when Singapore was still finding its footing as a modern metropolis. The two boys, Kei Chin An and To Hong Huat, were schoolmates and close friends. They had gathered at the fast food joint after their classes. Their backpacks slung over chairs, they chatted about homework, soccer matches, and dreams that stretched beyond the horizon. As evening draped the city in twilight hues, Chin An and Hong Huat stepped out into the world, their footsteps leaving no trace. Kei Chin An was born on March 22, 1974, making him the youngest of three children and the only son in his family. His parents were Tae Mi N A, mother, and Kei Cheng Pan, father. He had an elder sister named Kei Hui Hong. At the time of his disappearance, Kei Chin An was a 12-year-old boy and a primary six student at Owen Primary School which is now defunct since 1989 and demolished. He was generally well-behaved and did not miss classes. On the afternoon of May 14, 1986, Chin An alighted from his school bus and reached Owen Primary School. His classmate, Wang Paiwei, was the last person to physically see him alive. Wang offered to help Chin An take care of his school bag as Chin An wanted to go to nearby shops outside the school. Wang left Chin An's bag at the school's tuck shop bench, assuming that Chin An would come back to collect it. Unfortunately, Chin An never returned, and he was last seen leaving the school premises. To Hong Huat, Chin An's best friend, was born either on May 18 or June 5, 1974 as there is some uncertainty about his birth date. He was born in Malaysia. Hong Huat was typically a shy boy who preferred to be with his mother. On the morning of the disappearance, he had asked to go to school on his own, as he was meeting his friend, presumably Chin An. Like Chin An, Hong Huat was last seen on the afternoon of May 14, 1986, walking with Chin An to school after the latter fetched him from his house near their school. After that moment, neither boy was ever seen again. Madam Tan Jiok Guan, To Hong Huat's mother, bore the weight of uncertainty. The last person to see her son, she vividly recalled his request to go to school alone that fateful day. The frantic search for the missing boys commenced immediately. The Singaporean police launched an extensive investigation into the disappearance of the boys. They meticulously gathered information, interviewed witnesses, and explored various leads. The police collaborated with other law enforcement agencies, including Interpol, to widen the search net. They shared information and worked together to trace any potential sightings or connections across borders. The police analyzed forensic evidence, including fingerprints, footprints, and any belongings left behind by the boys. They also examined the last known locations where the boys were seen. The community actively participated in spreading awareness about the missing boys. Flyers, posters, and announcements were distributed across schools, neighborhoods, and public spaces. Concerned citizens formed volunteer search teams to comb through parks, forests, and nearby areas. Candlelight vigils, prayers, and community gatherings were organized to express solidarity. On August 27, 1986, an anonymous informant reported to the police that they had seen the missing boys on Pulau Ubin, a small island roughly 10 square kilometers situated in the northeast of Singapore. In response to this tip, the Criminal Investigation Department, CID, swiftly dispatched nearly 100 officers to Pulau Ubin. These officers were organized into 24 sections and smaller teams, 
meticulously scouring the entire island in search of any trace of the boys. Unfortunately, despite their exhaustive efforts, the search yielded no results. On the 3rd of September 1986, Chin An's father, Mr. K, received a disturbing phone call. The stress from what he described as that nasty phone call triggered a stroke the following morning. All he remembered then was becoming pale, giddy, as his limbs turned weak, and he was admitted to Singapore General Hospital for about two weeks. He eventually recovered but was then unable to recollect the call. Shockingly, Madam Tan, Hong Huat's mother told the Straits Times that she received a vulgar phone call on the same night. The caller was a man who spoke in Hokkien. He said I should not hope for my son's return, she said. And then, an unexpected ally emerged, McDonald's. The very place where the boys had last been seen became a hub of cooperation. The fast food giant collaborated with law enforcement, providing surveillance footage, employee testimonies, and access to their extensive network. The police facilitated the $100,000 reward offered by McDonald's to encourage public participation. This reward served as an incentive for anyone with relevant information to come forward. Numerous tips and leads poured in from concerned citizens. People reported possible sightings, suspicious individuals, and other relevant details to the police. However, despite the huge reward offered by McDonald's, huge press releases and a police search which extended to neighboring countries including Malaysia and Indonesia, the boys were never found. The mystery of the missing McDonald's boys has captivated public interest, yet few theoretical explanations exist. These theories do not constitute factual evidence or definitive conclusions. One theory speculates that the boys are residing in Johor Bahru, Malaysia. It was rumored that Hong Huat's estranged father had taken him there and the two have since grown up. Hong Huat's parents were separated at the time of the incident. Another theory speculated that the boys had been abducted by a human trafficking syndicate and taken to Thailand. Believing that her son had been taken and sold abroad, Madam Tan went to Kuala Lumpur in search of him. She reached out to several organizations, including the Malay Mail Afternoon Daily and the Malaysian Chinese Association's Public Complaints and Services Bureau for help. The Singapore police took their search to Malaysia, Indonesia and Thailand in 1987 but could not find the pupils. In recent years, a lead pointed to the fact that it could be the work of a teacher who may have later been transferred to nearby Rangoon Primary School. Chin An and Hong Huat were not the only missing pupils from Owen Primary School. In 1975, 11 years before the McDonald boys disappeared, another Owen Primary School pupil Wong Weng Boon disappeared. Weng Boon, however, was reduced to just a small report in the New Nation, dated the 4th of December 1975. He, too, had not been seen since. However, the Singapore police had refuted some public speculations such as drowning, human trafficking and murder. They have since dubbed this missing persons case as puzzling. The families of the boys continue to search for answers. Four decades have slipped by, yet they cling on to hope. The unanswered questions persist. Why did they vanish? Where did they go? The McDonald's boys may never return, but their legacy lives on. Comprehensive coverage of the case keeps the memory of the missing boys alive, a testament to the complexities of their disappearance and the unwavering determination of those who seek answers.